Hello everyone and welcome back to the Silicon Nubian YouTube channel where we do all things tech. A backup solution is a vital component to anyone's computing environment. Whether it's simply keeping duplicate copies of important files or backing up whole computers via image files or some kind of, um, of folder synchronization, backup solutions are critical to stave off any possibility of the horrors of data loss. The recommended solution that I tell my clients, friends, and whoever talks to me about backup solutions, and I talk to everyone about it, so they have to talk to me about it, is putting a NAS on your network. NAS, or NAS, the acronym stands for Network Attached Storage. In layman's terms, it's a device that can where hard drives are inserted into it. Let's just put it like that, hard drive. Some of the new ones have SSDs sits on your network, is accessible via your network, and files can be stored there. Now I'm, I'm oversimplifying it for the, for the benefit of this video not to go on too long, but that's the main function with respect to this video of a backup solution. That way, for example, I perform uh, differential or backups uh, once every few days. So if my system crashes, my SSD drives, my hard drives die, um, the other computers in the office and around even in the home, they will always just be a few days behind. I won't lose anything. Uh, all I will lose is the data that was supposed to be backed up within those last few days. And I may not even lose that because I also have folder synchronization going on daily. So I might be only a few hours behind. Well, you can purchase a commercial NAS from companies such as Synology, QNAP, Asus Store. Uh, generally, the cheapest ones go for around $200, and I'm talking in Canadian funds. You can do the translation yourself and then have to buy the two hard drives. They would have to be fairly large hard drives in today's day and age. Um, I have two three terabyte drives in my NAS, and I think I really need to go much higher than that, double if possible. And uh, it can get costly, but remember, the value of the data, the files on your computers are much more valuable than the hardware that it sits on. Another way is to build your own NAS and use dedicated software to turn your computer into a network attached storage device. You would, for example, pull that old Pentium 4 or that old Core 2 Duo or just some low powered machine out of the closet or build one, stuff a bunch of hard drives in it and install something like what we're going to look at today, which is Rockstore on the computer and it turn it into a network attached storage device. Now, while we have discussed what it, its primary function, these days NAS, NAS devices can do a whole lot more than just store files. Uh, they can serve data, they can serve media, become media servers. There's a whole lot of other things that they can do, but for the sake of brevity, and to keep within the scope of this video, we'll just, we're going to take a look at Rockstore. Rockstore is based on CentOS, and it turns any computer into a network attached storage device. Okay, so this is post installation. You cannot really see what Rockstore looks like because it runs headless. What that means is once you've installed it on the actual machine, if you boot it up again, all you're going to get is a blinking cursor. Rockstore, um, how it works, just like FreeNAS, which I've used for many years, you have to log in remotely through another computer, so that's what we've done. We've installed Rockstore on another on another machine, actually a virtual machine, as all my reviews are done that way. And we are at the screen directly post login. We found out what the IP address is, and here's the IP up here, and HTTPS, and we have the IP, and it takes you right to the login, first time login screen. So we're gonna log in. Uh, I did not go through the installation. It's quite simple. It's uh, if you've installed CentOS before um, or any one of the other Linux distributions, it'll be quite easy for you. So you accept the agreement, you give it a host name. Give a username. 
and the password. And that's it. Now what we're seeing, they're gonna ask you, would you like to update now to the latest version? This is the interesting thing about Rockstore, I should show you this. There are two things, this is how Rockstore, the company makes money. It's the frequency and type of updates that you get. You have the stable updates, which come every two, three to four weeks. They're the highest priority bug fixes, automated functional testing, so they're tested, automated, say tested in development environment, low risk of regressions, tested in production environment, tested by community. And then you have the testing updates. This is two to three days, priority bug fixes, it varies, and you don't get the test and develop, um, low risk of regressions and whatnot. It's kind of like a scare tactic in a, in a way. If you activate the stable updates, it will take you to the Rockstore website where you'll have to pay, I believe it's $40 Canadian, in order to get this functionality. But if you don't, want to spend the money you can just activate the testing updates and it'll work that way and this will run free i'm not sure of any other uh limitations there may be others and people might be able to point that out in the in the uh in the comment section below so these are the updates that are available and you just scroll down and start update and the updates will start. Let's go back to the dashboard. The dashboard is where we see everything that's running on your system. We see the disk activity, kilobytes written, writes. We see the shares, we haven't created any really yet. CPU usage, very low. Individual CPU usage. Pool capacity, that's the pool of your hard drives. Memory usage and your network usage and down here we have total capacity total capacity allocation and usage let's go through a little bit more of what's here storage shows the disks that are available it's a virtual box disk um, smart not supported gives you a bunch of different um, uh, things about your drive for example the model serial number and whatnot Rescan, smart not supported, so we can't really activate smart on this drive. Pools, we have one pool, 9.4 gigs. Uh, compression is off, so I guess this compression is, is, um, is uh, supported. Although in this day and age of cheap storage, uh, I, I am not a fan of compression. No need really. We have identity. Sorry, shares. <clears throat> Here we can create shares available on our network using different protocols. Uh, I think NFS, SMB, or some in uh, other software they call it CFS. It's all in in uh, it's all supported. We can create shares. If we create a share, we can create a share with a share name. Uh, compression inherit from pool wide configuration. We don't have any compression set. The space of it and whatnot and uh, this is the amount of space they tell you that's free and unprovisioned available to you okay so shares is there we have snapshots we can take uh, quick snapshots of the system for even more security on our data in case anything happens here so we can even have scheduled snapshots or create a snapshot replication once we create pools, we can replicate them and send and receive them from different, I, I would believe, Rockstore servers, but I'm not sure. Uh, file sharing, we have NFS. Warning, it's not running. We have different services, so it supports NFS, Samba, SFTP, and AFP. This can all be expanded. I'll go on that in a, in a little bit. And you'd have to turn each of these on, and you can do some configuration. You can create a Samba export and whatnot, SFTP, create a share, AFP, and you can, you can, it supports all of that out of the box. Let's go to system. We have services. These are the services that are running. Some of them, Bootstrap is running, Rockstore is running, Smart, um, SFTP, no, Shell in a Box is running. So this you can 
turn on and off services as you wish. There is a second page, Z-Tax D, AFP, LDAP. So there's quite a, a lot of services to play with, uh, which means that it's um, very configurable and flexible according to your needs. Uh, so we go on to users. This is the user, one user that we have, what group we're in, um, and we can always edit the user if we wish, change the group if we need to, and uh, pretty uh, straightforward there. Here we have the groups, admin, audio, Avahi, bin, CD-ROM, and whatnot. If you've used Linux before um, and you've dug a little deeper than the average, you know about, you've seen all these things before. Uh, access keys, of course, then we have network, networking, uh, we can modify the networking in here. Schedule tasks, software updates, schedule tasks, things we can do, software updates, appliances. We can, inst we can install appliances. What's an appliance? In layman's terms, and I always put it in layman's terms, an appliance is a, a working piece of software. Um, it's basically a stub of an operating system, and this is when I'm talking about hypervisors and whatnot. An appliance is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a set of software code that is designed to do one thing. For example, you might have an appliance for a web, brow, a web server appliance, or you might have um, a Joomla appliance. Uh, I'm not sure if, if Rockstore supports those kind of appliances, but that's my understanding of appliance when I used um, Proxmox or uh, VMware hypervisor. SSL certificates, config backups, email alerts. Of course, Rockstar can email you about a host of different things. You just add your email account and whatnot. And system shell, if you want to type in commands, it is CentOS, so you can type in commands. Rockons. Rockons are interesting. It's a service that you have to start. Rockons is Rockstore's proprietary way of adding functionality to Rockstore itself via add-ons. So Rockons are basically add-ons that you could put, you can download, and they are available at the Rockstore website. You'll see the available Rockons that are available. Available Rockons are available. Please excuse me. You'll see what's available, and there's a number of them that look very interesting. Of course, you have Donate, Shop. Here you can drop quickly to System Shell in a box. Uh, it's a service that you have to run. Go back to the dashboard. So storage, shares. We can create a share. And we can give it whatever size up to the max that we're allowed to give it. Give it a name for the share, the pool that it's in and whatnot. I have a few tips though. Uh, if uh, These tips I think are inherited from when I used to use um, other software. When you're installing software like Rockstore uh, and creating your own NAS, I would recommend that you install it separately from the pools that you're going to create. Uh, that's what I would do. Um, for example, when I had free NAS, I had a I installed FreeNAS on a flash drive, actually, and FreeNAS uh, freely, uh, I should tell you that FreeNAS actually does support installing the system on a flash drive and uh, running the system. All the other drives in there were used for creating system pools. I'm not sure if Rockstore supports that. This is actually my first time looking at Rockstore. I am um, intrigued with it. And being that it's based on CentOS, I would think that the stability of it would be very good. So over here on the dashboard, we can click on, we can decide what gets seen, what is shown. Um, here we have our local time, host name. So all in all, it's pretty complete, pretty complete. So because we install Rockstore on this, the same drive that we have for storage, it created a pool. 
what I would have done is put Rockstore on a small 40 gig or 30 gig SSD. It's not that large. The installation is quite small. And then have my big two, three terabyte hard drives, a bunch of them, and create pools. I believe Rockstore supports different file systems. And it does, for sure, when you create the pools. Uh, software, uh, RAID, I believe. And a few other things that are really nice little things for a, any kind of NAS system to install, to support, sorry. Um, so all in all, this is my first look at Rockstore. I don't pretend to be a professional at it. Um, I do have, uh, definitely have experience with uh, running software like this as I ran FreeNAS for a couple of years uh, religiously and loved it. Also, I've run CentOS. I really just wanted to get a look at this intriguing piece of software and give you an opportunity as the viewer to know that this exists and it is out there. There is another uh, piece of software that does the same thing. It's called OpenFiler. Uh, in my opinion, the granddaddy of all of them is FreeNAS. The thing with FreeNAS um, that differentiates it from Rockstore is FreeNAS has a lot more functionality. But any of these software that I mentioned, whether it be Rockstore, FreeNAS, or OpenFiler, or whatever, does require a pretty good knowledge of operating systems or at least a good knowledge of computing in general. Um, if you've never used a NAS software or a NAS drive before, um, some of the things such as if we go to storage and you look at pools, snapshots, shares, you'll, most people will know, but when you talk about pools, snapshots, NFS, Samba, SFT, PFP, uh, they'll look at you like a deer in the headlights. So really a little bit of uh, networking knowledge is required and would make sense for someone who would actually seek this out. I haven't been able to test its reliability. If it's based on CentOS, I have no doubt that it's quite reliable um, and it's extensible. And this is something that's important as well. Uh, again, if to reiterate, it does cost money to get the more tested updates. But if your system's running fine, unless there's something really glaring about it, um, be careful with your updates anyways. So that's my little quick look at Rockstore. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it wasn't too superficial. I'm going to poke around a little bit more and uh, maybe I'll get open filer on here and do a video on that and do a comparison, comparison video of the two, uh, maybe even FreeNAS. So if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up, give me a like. Give me some comments. Maybe you can school me on Rockstore. Uh, it's my first time looking at it. Seems very interesting. I might play around with it on real hardware just to see. I'm not going to give up my Synology uh, NAS anytime soon, but it's good to keep up to date with these things as well. So that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, give a thumbs up. Please tell others. Subscribe. And we have a lot of new videos coming up soon. And we do have an AMD Ryzen build coming up. My personal AMD Ryzen build. Hopefully within another week or two, uh, I'll be able to get that out to you. So take care and thanks for watching.